we even interviewed their victim. Uh, two black males were physically assaulted, kidnapped, sexually abused, haunted. They had racial slurs hurled at them for hours by police officers, by cops. But those cops are now in jail, significant history, violence was part of their life. Let's go to it. I to stand right here, knowing you know what happened right here. Justice is what it all you know what it all boiled down to. I'm just like them, you know, whether they they in uniform or not. For six months, Eddie Parker has been living in a house of horrors, where he says he was brutally beaten by deputies sworn to protect this rural Mississippi community. I crawled here to this spot, and they, uh, they uh, started uh, beating me here and tasing me. As you can see, you know, blood spots and all. And my blood spots there. On January 24th, Parker and his friend Michael Jenkins say that six white Rankin County deputies entered the home and tortured them for nearly two hours. A heavily redacted incident report says deputies were investigating, quote, reports of narcotic activity at the house. They said they saw a gun, though there was no proof either man had a weapon. In a federal civil rights lawsuit, the men allege deputies entered without a warrant, handcuffed them, and subjected them to nearly two hours of torture and racist abuse. Jenkins was shot in the mouth during the incident. And Mary Jenkins, Michael's mother, says her son will never be the same. I prayed with him, and I asked Mike, I said, if it's any life in you, Michael, if it's anything in you, please squeeze my hand. Please let me know you're still in this body. And he did. Jenkins' injuries make it difficult for him to speak. It hurts. I'm embarrassed. Has anyone from the department ever reached out to you and apologized? Have they ever asked for anything at, at all? No. The two men are suing a half a dozen Rankin County Sheriff's deputies, three named and three only identified as John Doe's. Rankin County Sheriff Brian Bailey was also named in the suit and he said earlier this month, deputies involved in the incident were no longer with the department, although he did not confirm the number of deputies or their names. We interviewed both of the victims. It was a difficult interview. Turner Shabazz is providing advocacy for them. Put up the picture of two of these extremists known as the Goon Squad, Hunter Elward and Christian Deadman. They are two former Rankin County Sheriff's Office deputies tied to the Goon Squad scandal. That's what they call themselves, that, that's called a gang, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, they were a gang. Uh, they were connected to the fatal police uses of force against black men in the Mississippi County years before the unlawful home raid in which two black men were brutalized this year. There was a lawsuit filed in 2021 that reveals that those two cops were present when police officers shot and killed a man named Pierre Woods in 2019. According to the report, cops responded to a call about shots fired at the home where Woods was inside. Let's put him up. Authorities said Woods fired at them from inside during a standoff that lasted more than an hour until police threw tear gas into the home. Although Woods had a pistol in one of his hands, both his hands were extended above his head as he approached the front door. Lawyers for the women wrote in court documents, once he reached the front door, of his home was immediately threw the pistol to the ground. And it landed in the area where Deputy Hunter Elward and Deputy Zach Acey were positioned. The officers are said to have started shooting without warning Woods at all. Put him up. Mr. Woods' brother said that he believes the officers engaged in excessive force when his brother was shot. Quote, they fired enough shots to kill an elephant, Wood said to WAPT around the time of the fatal shooting. You'll go to jail for shooting a dog as many times as they shot my brother. In 2021, Elward was involved 
in contentious, uh, a contentious incident where uh, Damian Cameron was punched and shot three times with a taser by the deputy. Let's put him up. Uh, the man was accused of vandalizing a neighbor's home. Reports state that Officer Elwood was joined by other officers who held Cameron down for 15 minutes despite his complaints, breathing difficulty. These are the ones we know about. The Mississippi State Medical Examiner's report on Cameron's death was inconclusive. And in October 2022, a Mississippi grand jury declined to press charges against Officer Elwood and other deputies due to insufficient evidence. However, the New York Times consulted three independent forensic pathologists to review Mr. Cameron's death. And they identified signs of asphyxiation in his neck, suggesting a different cause of death. Let me tell you why I believe these experts. One, when you say inconclusive on a medical examination report, you likely will never be held criminally liable for obstructing justice or manipulating evidence. Because you're allowed to have that opinion without real consequence. While the two deputies were never held responsible for using force in their previous cases, Deadman and Elwood have pleaded guilty in their current case and are awaiting sentencing. Once again, the system, right? Remember the sheriff who claimed, oh, you know, they're no longer with the department. He backed the play initially. When we first reported on that story, he backed the play of these cops. They were so egregious, they literally had a cop who was not even in their jurisdiction partake in this madness. They call themselves the goon squad. What are they really? They are a rebranded permeation of the KKK. Because according to the black men, who were assaulted and damn near died. These cops were saying things like, do you date white women? And he was sexually assaulting them, making them take showers together. How sick and depraved are these individuals? These individuals, according to the men we interviewed, were well known in the community. They knew them as a gang, not as the police. They referred to them. As the goon squad, they knew these cops by name and reputation because the sheriff and every other authority allowed this. So while they may act as if they don't know how these cops became, became so corrupt, please understand the reality of the system that made them. Sharon, thoughts here. Yeah, and they all know him, including Dr. Stacy Turner. That corner that you were speaking of, Dr. Ritchie, they all knew the one who said Damien Cameron's case was undetermined, okay? People need to be clear on just how closely police, prosecutors, coroners, the chief medical examiner work together to fraudulently hold no one accountable when they kill black people. Yep. It's just a fact. And something needs to be done about this special prosecutor. You know the law. Can we take Hunter Biden, special prosecutor, and move that person over to kind of deal with some of these cases? Yeah, there you go. All right, we we will bring updates as they come.